What's going on, uh, everybody? This is uh, Bobby G, episode two of Bobby's Book Review. And uh, today we're going to be uh, talking about, or I'm going to be talking about, uh, a book by a man named Thomas Sowell who recently just turned uh, 90 years old. Uh, he is at uh, the Hoover Institute over at Stanford University. Dr. Thomas Sowell, I should say. And the book is Intellectuals and Society. Uh, revised and enlarged edition and this book is if you don't count the index you're talking 646 47 pages and there's a reason for that uh, in intellectuals and society there are two contrasting visions that uh, he talks about in this book uh, one is the vision of the anointed and then there is those who have the tragic vision and what's the difference well, the difference is, as he describes it, um, those who have the vision of the anointed, I think they are, are essentially uh, self-proclaimed messiahs, uh, what many people today call elitists, who have a mindset that they know what's best for the world. And he also makes a point that you don't necessarily have to be rich to be an elitist, because some people make those uh, connections somehow, but that's really kind of a stretch. Um, you just have to have the mindset of someone who's an elitist to have that kind of vision of the anointed, he says. Uh, and then there are those who have um, what he calls the tragic vision, or what's more of a reality check. Uh, working class folks like myself and others, uh, no matter who you are or where you're from, if you're working class, if you're working a Joe job, if you're working a 9 to 5, if you're working a second or third shift job, just to make red meat, you're a person that more likely has the... Uh, what's known as the tragic vision. That's kind of a boots on the ground, real life, real, real life kind of situations. Um, <clears throat> and he gets into um, quite a few areas of where intellectuals think they know what's best for society. Uh, this is divided into uh, eight parts, with the last part being an overview. Uh, but you get into intellectuals and race, intellectuals and war, intellectuals and the law. Uh, optional reality, uh, which has to do with filtering reality and subjective truth, uh, intellectuals and social visions, intellectuals and economics, and then just kind of working my way backwards back to the uh, introduction. And, you know, you have people who think they know, who are just kind of up in their ivory towers, they think, or are in their own little bubble, and haven't quite gotten out into uh, the real, real world. And those are... Um, the intellectuals or those with the vision of the anointed who think almost to the point where they think that they're God, that they can control everything. That's pretty much what a person with the vision of the anointed has. Whereas someone who has uh, the tragic vision, as he argues in this book of different subjects, if you're someone like me and you have the tragic vision, then when you're someone like me who's a veteran who has um, been in war, who's actually been in places and had to see things and do things that most people don't in this world, uh, you tend to look at more of the actual cost of things like life. Uh, you tend to look more at the cost of what does it mean to defend your country, what does it mean to be in the military, and so on. You actually have more of a reality check. <clears throat> and, you know, same thing with economics, is, is you have some people who have never had to work a job in their life, or they did work a job and they got to themselves to a point economically where they're just so separated from the rest of society that they think because they made it a certain way to a certain level that that's how everybody else should do it. In reality, it's not how things work. <clears throat> Same thing with education. To give a side example, uh, I was at a conference at CCDA some years ago and there was a, a panel of uh, educators somewhere homeschooling, some were public, some were private, some were primary, some were secondary, some were post-secondary, um, some were charter schools, you know, and the one question that everybody had a consensus on is, is there, they, they were asked a question, is there a silver bullet with regards to education reform that we can fix this whole thing? And everybody on the on the um, panel said no, no, because not everybody learns the same way, and that's just one example. Um, but this book is a really if you're if you're able to get through dense books, uh, this is definitely one for you. Um, and like I said, it gets into a lot of things. 
economics, war, uh, discrimination, things like that. Um, and he has quite a few books uh, out there on, on such things called uh, disparities and discrimination and so on. Um, and just to give you a context of uh, who uh, Dr. Thomas Sowell is, originally from Harlem, <clears throat> born and raised, um, African American background, and the reason I bring that up is because um, during Harlem, he grew up during what was known as the Harlem Renaissance, and he um, was originally a Marxist, a socialist, um, but he was also an empiricist. He was someone who wanted to base his findings and wanted to base his views on evidence, on facts, on actual tangible proof with regards to certain cases. Well, after a while, and after taking a economics class from Milton Friedman, of all people, he was still a Marxist until he went to work for the Bureau of Labor, of Labor. <clears throat> for the Department of the Bureau of Labor. And he went to work there, and he had some empirical evidence with regards to uh, hiring practices and regards to unequal opportunities in terms of employment, found some empirical evidence, presented it to the Bureau of Labor, and the Bureau of Labor just kind of looked the other way like, I don't see that. I didn't see that. And he saw effectively what happens when government controls everything, and he was like, yeah, I'm out. And since then, uh, he's written uh, his uh, tome, which he's known for, which is Basic Economics, which I have in the 5th edition. Uh, it's been updated that many times, and that was in 2014, 2016, thereabouts. But he's written so many other books uh, besides that, which I may get into later on, but I just wanted to bring that background to say that this is a man who knows his stuff. Um, when it comes to what's going on in our world today, when you see what's going on with a lot of talking heads, both on the right and the left, um, and I'm an independent, so I, I have no... I have no loyalties uh, in terms of political parties either way. <clears throat> but if you kind of want to get more of a better idea of how things work in society and, and the difference between um, the elitist, the intellectual elitist, and the average Joe, who has more of a realistic uh, view of the world, this is a book you want to get into. Intellectuals in Society, Dr. Thomas Sowell, and... Uh, it just it's chock full of stuff, but again, you 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 really gotta be able to put in the work because this is a big old book. Uh, for all my fellow bookworms out there, if you're interested, check it out. Uh, also, sidebar before I forget, uh, when I watched a segment of a panel for the I believe it was the Revolt Summit, and you had Ti, you had Killer Mike, you had Candace Owens, and a few others. Um, and one thing that Killer Mike and Kenneth Owens actually agreed on was to read individuals such as Walter E. Williams and Thomas Sowell. If you want to uh, see the proof for that, look up uh, Revolt TV, look up uh, Revolt TV, Revolt Summit, and uh, with Kenneth Owens, T.I., and, and Killer Mike and a few other individuals, and you'll see him say that. Among other individuals, like Marcus Garvey and such. But that's my uh, review for today. Um, hope you guys get a chance to check it out. And this is uh, Bobby's book review. Coming at you again sometime soon. Peace.